David said, I'm, I'm a lighting designer. Um, I work outside, uh, I work at night, and I work in the public realm. And um, I, I wouldn't dare to um, speak for the entire lighting industry. I would say that many of my colleagues uh, understand, as I do, that we not only have to use less energy, we also have to use less light. Um, my kind of personal uh, come to Jesus moment, which David refers to, was, was an article that was written in, in 2008 in the New York Times, and it was um, titled, Talking to the Fireflies Before Their Flash Disappears. And um, it had a very visceral, I had a very visceral reaction to that, because of course they are almost a, a marker of enchantment and, and mystery, and they are indeed dying because they're failing to mate because of strain light. And that awareness that light can have such a profound impact on another species led me on to a fairly long investigation into the ecological impacts of nighttime lighting effects on turtles being the one that most of us know, but also the effect on bats, on um, salamanders, and, and most alarmingly um, now uh, the effect on zooplankton. Um, I've also, through my practice, been, been very well aware and very much impacted by the work of the Dark Sky Association. Um, <clears throat> in many of the projects that I'm working, their recommendations are, are very much um, part of how our lighting is shaped. Um, and then, you know, personally, through my research um, as an environmental psychologist and the research of others, I am <clears throat> utterly convinced that lighting does not increase safety and does not decrease crime. And also aware that a woman is much safer on a dark street than she is in her own home. And a co-ed on a campus is safer on a dark street than she is on someone that she with someone that she just recently met and is going out on a date. So understanding that that lighting and security has a tenuous um, connection at best has, has also made me consider at, at to a great extent fear, which comes up in almost every discussion that you have when you work at night. And I think it's sort of helpful to clarify something, which is that Fear is a physiological and a psychological reaction to a threat. When the threat goes away, whoops, I had to change this. When the threat goes away, see if this actually does. When the threat goes away, the fear should subside. So <clears throat> fear is actually, um, while it's unpleasant, it's kind of like pain. It's absolutely necessary. So if you're using lighting, to combat fear, you may well be masking something that's a very real and important signal. So what we deal with when we go out into a project is something I think very different. You know, we live in a chaotic, bewildering, unstable, disorienting world. And the reactions to that are actually very nuanced. Um, people feel wary. They feel anxious. They have a sense of foreboding, um, sometimes a sense of rage. And those kind of more generalized and diffuse feelings are the ones that you're often engaging when you go into a public project. So your job as a lighting designer is actually to reconcile stewardship <clears throat> of the environment, protection of other species, of the night sky, um, providing the utility of lighting, to, to, to reconcile that with, in a way, the, needs, the, the, the kind of rare thing which I think lighting does, which, which is, is to provide a sort of calm, a sense of soothing, a sense of enchantment, and also a sense of orientation. So if that's the designer's responsibility, then the underlying sort of driver of that is, is that we have to respond creatively and imaginatively. So just briefly, I'm going to show you four projects that we're working on that um, where we hope we're, we're bringing imaginative answers to the table. This is a project in Baltimore in a very high crime neighborhood, underserved, poor, 
uh, a lot of gang violence going on, and where the kids in the neighborhood are quite frankly terrified. Uh, we were brought in by an arts organization and we're working very closely with the gang experts from the police department. And what we're doing is working with the kids to develop lighting solutions that they can participate in, 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 in building and, and in telling us where they think the additional lighting should be. So rather than going in and adding all this anti-crime lighting, in fact, we're working on adding lighting to their doorways, to their significant buildings, and using um, techniques that they they have in their arts organization, where they're they're using mosaics and tiles and, and some brightly colored elements. Um, this is a project in Syracuse that's ongoing. Um, I went up to Syracuse. They're building a connected corridor for bicycles that goes all the way through the city, and um, I went up there and. <laughs> took my, my little meter, and, and at the beginning of the project, and I was like, but guys, we've got enough light up here. So then the question is, why light? And in this case, we're using lighting to draw attention to the bike path, to create a sense of orientation, and also to make people aware, and to say, you know, wake up, this is a bike path, pay attention. And we're also using elements of the landscape, billboards, um, parking lots, and, and combining with furniture and graphics to make this um, to make this pathway a place that bikers can use at night. And uh, this is a project in Calgary. And this project actually went totally underwater about six months ago. But um, project is the success of it is being measured by its ability to attract users to the park who feel a tremendous sense of unease. That not fear unease. And at the same time, it's being measured as by the amount of bird life that is going to thrive there. So we've created these islands of bird habitat, and then islands of human habitat, and working out ways for them to coexist. And finally, this is a project in Albuquerque, which has a really lovely um, and very uh, thoughtful ordinance, which begins it is pleasing to the senses and the intellect of mankind to be able to gaze at the night sky with minimal interference from light pollution, working with the architects, and in some way working with the sky. We designed a system for redirecting the lights up into the ceiling and bringing them down for the bikers, but also um, sort of trying to cre create an environment that would be attractive to bikers, but also an environment that allowed whatever the toxic elements of light are to really be redirected and useful. Thank you.